Okay, so, you know, what is the, uh, what, are, what are we believing for this year? The year of extraordinary favor. And ever since Pastor Bert was um, preaching on this message, I, um, God was already speaking to me a message for when I was going to preach. And all, a, a lot of y'all, I know Sister Vicky has, but um, a lot of y'all have been experiencing some of God's, God's extraordinary favor. Amen. Raise your hand if you've gotten something amazing this year. That's just the favor of God. Amen. There's hands all up around the room. And this message, God was just speaking to me, and he kind of separated the words. God is saying that this year is going to be extraordinary. Amen. It's extraordinary. Have you heard the, uh, the term supernatural? God will put his super on our natural. It's the same term. It's the same. It's the use the same way. God is going to put his extra on our ordinary. Amen. Because God has something so amazing for you, for you, for you personally. There is a gift. There is a blessing with your name on it in heaven. But we've got to receive it in the spirit. Amen. We've got to say, God, I receive that blessing right now with my name on it. Every day he has something for you. Every single day. And we've got to wake up in the morning and say, God, I receive that. How many of y'all go to a restaurant and you say, I want some extra fries? Or is that just me? <laughs> extra fries, please. Extra cheese. Extra bacon on that burger. Yeah, I know. You want a little extra, right? Who doesn't want extra? You know, when I asked my dad, I say, I asked my dad, you know, when I was younger, and I'll say, I call him Tata, and I said, Tata, can I have $10 for lunch? And he'll give me 20 Amen? Because that's just God. That is just the favor of a father. And I know God is the same way. You may be asking God for something, but God's just going to give you that and a little bit more. Amen? God is, the, God is a God of more than enough. Amen? He don't just give you what you want, but he's going to not give you what you need, but he's going to give you what you want even more. Amen? All right, so Remy, precious Remy, she is stepping into her terrific twos, okay? I know. So who's clapping back there? <laughs> Sister Becky. <laughs> you come over, okay? Come, come deal with her when she's having her tantrums. We, um, a lot of people say, t uh, was it terrible twos? And I'm like, no, uh, we're trying to do more positive. And um, we say terrific twos. And she's going on 23 months on the first. And she's already being a terrific two-year-old. And she's just so good at it, guys. Um, if you just take anything away from her, she's like, Arr! she gets all tense. I'm like, chill. God, you're just being extra. God, she's just like, I'm like, oh, Lord. I said, I'm going back to work. Bye. And she's like, bye, bye. It's like, girl, she's already going on 22. But, gosh, you know, Remy, I just see like, oh, she's being, that's why I tell Pastor Bert sometimes, like, she's just being extra. Have you ever had your kids be extra every now and then, mom and dads? And they're still being extra? Mm -hmm. Sister Jess is like, uh -huh. Amen. Let's go to Psalms 23, 1 in the Passion Translation. Thank you, Sister Becky, for stepping up, like, really, really last minute. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Psalms 23, 1 in the Passion Translation. Brother Reuben said, if I got done at 1130, you can take me to Gills. But I got up here at 1130, so I don't know what the deal is on that yet. I said, hey, you can bribe me with food. Psalms 23.1, it says, the Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. How many of y'all have a best friend in the house? Amen. Everybody has a best friend. How many of y'all know if you ask your best friend for $10, they may give you a little bit more than that? Right? If you ask best friend for something, they're there to help you, right? Even more over and beyond. Jesus is our best friend. Don't forget about that. He is our best friend. And not only that, he's our shepherd. And what does a shepherd do? The shepherd guides. The shepherd provides. The shepherd protects. That is Jesus. That is God for us. 
And it goes on to say that he is more than enough. He is more than enough. God is all powerful. There's nothing too big for God, amen? I want to go into this story in 2 Kings 4, 4 through 7 in the New Living Translation. 2 Kings 4, 4 through 7. And I'm just going to read it off the screen maybe if they have it up. If not, it's okay. I got my, I got my Bible too. 2 Kings 4, 4 through 7 in the New Living Okay, and this is a story about, about a widow. She had lost her husband, and so she was in some trouble, okay? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start, I'm going to start at the top, Sister Becky, okay? One day, the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha, and she cried out, My husband who served you is dead, and you know how he feared the Lord, But now a creditor has come, threatening to take my two sons as slaves. Verse 2 says, what can I do to help you? Elisha asked. Tell me, what do you have in your house? Nothing at all except a flask of olive oil, she replied. And Elisha said, borrow as many empty jars as you can from your neighbors and from your friends. Then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting each one aside when it is filled. So she did as she was told, and her sons kept bringing jars to her, and she filled one after another. And soon every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. There aren't any more, he told her. And then the oil, the olive oil stopped flowing. And when she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, Now sell the olive oil, pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on what is left over. Amen. Here, God not only paid her debt, but she lived off profit. She had more than enough. God, Jesus, had blessed that oil to where it kept going and going and going. That, G, that she took the instructions of the prophet. She took the instructions. She took the oil. She asked, she asked everyone for flasks. And she talk, took her sons and shut the door. Sometimes we need to shut the door, guys. We need to shut the door. Sometimes you got to do things in private. If God has told you something, do it in private. There's power in the privacy, okay? And so they shut the door, and they did what the prophet had told them. And because of that, Jesus canceled all of their their debts, and they lived off the more than the, the enough. Amen? That's what God wants to do for you. Okay, that is, that, that's just a, a beautiful illustration there. So this word is, to me, sometimes I feel like, Lord, I'm bringing all that I can. But sometimes we feel like that's not enough for God. Am I the only one that feels like that? Yeah. But that doesn't matter. Because God wants you to bring all that you can because he's going to do more and enough for you. Over and beyond for you. He's going to bring the overflow into your life. How many of y'all want overflow? Overflow in finances. Overflow in love in your marriage. Overflow in love and forgiveness and, and kindness for your children. Amen. I say love and forgiveness and kindness because sometimes <laughs> with a two, almost two-year-old, I'm like... But I have to be kind to her. I have to be kind to her. Let's go to Matthew 14 in the Passion Translation. I can turn to my Bible for this one. Matthew 14. Matthew 14, 15 through 21. Later that afternoon, the disciples came to Jesus 
and said, it's going to be dark soon and the people are hungry. This is when they were on the mountain and a lot of people were following Jesus and they needed some food because it was time to eat. He said, it's going to be dark soon and people are hungry, but there's nothing to eat here in this desolate place. You should send the crowds away to the nearby villages to buy themselves some food. But they don't need to leave, Jesus responded. You can give them something to eat. And they answered, but all we have is five barley loaves and two fish. Let me have them, Jesus replied. Then he had everyone sit down on the grass as he took the five loaves and the two fish. And he looked up into heaven. He gave thanks to God and he broke the bread into pieces. He then gave it to his disciples who in turn gave it to the, to the crowds. And everyone ate until they were satisfied, for the food was multiplied in front of their eyes. And they picked up the leftovers and filled up 12 baskets full. There were about 5,000 men who were fed in addition to many women and children. See, all they had was the five, the five barley loaves and the two fish. That's all they had. They brought to God what they had. And then God said, that's good. Because I can use that. And I could cause that to multiply. I can cause that to overflow. And I can cause that to be more than enough for everyone. That was thousands of people. 5,000 men, right? Is that what it said? 5,000 men. That's just counting the men. That's not counting the women, the wives, and the children. Children's. There was probably tons of children out there. That's probably a good, what, 10, 15,000 people out there? And Jesus fed them all with five loaves and two fish. You can't tell me that whatever you're bringing to God today isn't enough because it is. Because he can use that to prosper you. He can use that to heal you. He can use that to restore your family. Say, God, I'm just here. This is all I have. And that's totally fine. He wants your heart. He wants your faithfulness. Amen. Isn't God good? Thank you, Father. Am I doing good, Brother Reuben? Yeah? <laughs> Come on now. We're almost done. Guys, you know, you know, I just kind of get to the point, okay? Pastor Burt, you know, he has all the jokes. Man, God, I'm sorry. God didn't gift me that way, guys. But it's okay. If we have a good balance. Amen. We have a good balance. Let's go to Ephesians 3.20. This is the last scripture. Are y'all getting something this morning? Yeah. Amen. My prayer is that, that you will just leave church this morning and you have this in your heart. And know that you are more than enough. More than enough. You are more than enough. Because God wants to do extra on your ordinary. He wants to bring that extra. That little extra flavor. Amen. He wants to do that. Let's go to Ephesians 3.20 in the Amplified Version first. And then we're going to do the, the Passion. It says this, Now to him who by in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, our highest desires, our highest thoughts, our highest hopes, and our highest dreams. Amen. God is able. Now let's look at the Passion Translation. I love how it says this, the Passion Translation. It says, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request. How many of y'all have requests here? We all have a request, right? Your most unbelievable dream. How many of you have a dream in the house this morning? Amen. And exceed your wildest imaginations. He will outdo them all. For his miraculous power constantly energizes you. It constantly energizes you. God's power never runs out. Jesus' faithfulness never ends. And God is constantly looking over his word to perform it. He is always watching over it. And that means he's always watching over you. You are his children. 
Amen? So this morning, I want you to, rem- I just want to remind you this morning to expect overflow in your life. This is the year of extraordinary favor. But I like to say this is a year that God is going to put his extra on my ordinary. Little bit more. Because who doesn't want a little bit more? We always want a little bit more. Here's 100. You want another one? Heck, yeah, I want another one. You don't even have to ask me. God wants to do that for you. So expect more blessings this year. Expect more favor this year. Expect more overflow in your lives this year. Because what you're bringing to the table is good enough. God, this is, I, I barely have enough faith right now. It's good enough. God, my marriage is barely hanging on by a thread. It's good enough. God, my children don't want to come to church and they, they just want to stay home and, and not want to come. It's, it's okay. It's good enough. I could use that. God, I'm, I just moved here and I have nothing. It's good enough. You're in the perfect place for God to do the overflow in your life. You're in the perfect place for God to do the more than enough in your life. Amen. Would y'all stand with me? Thank you, Father. Let's go ahead and put that song on, Sister Becky. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So I want to just turn it down just a little. I want to do an altar call. I love to do altar calls because when I was young, and I grew up in a Baptist church, and it was a La Fe de Baptista something, something, something. I was like eight. And my dad would always come to the altar, and he would get on his knees, and the pastor would pray for all the men. I guess he called all the men. And, and, um, and he would come to the altar, and usually I was kind of asleep on the pew. We had, they had pews like that. And it was a Spanish church. I really didn't understand much Spanish. And so when that happened, I woke up. And I'd run to the altar, and I'd, and I'd get, on the knee, get on my knees next to my dad, and the pastor would pray over me, too. And I loved it. I loved that part, just coming to the altar, just to come to worship God and accept the word that was imparted to you this morning. I'm not saying to come and knee. If you want to, you can. It's totally up to you. I'm just saying what I did when I was little and that I really just, I will always remember that moment. But I just want to remind you this morning. That what you have is enough. Amen. So I want all of us to close our eyes. And I want you to come to the altar if you feel like this message has really just reminded you, like, you know what, God? What I have is enough this morning. If that's you, I want you to come up to the altar. I want to pray over you. Pastors, uh, Pastor Polly and I are going to pray. Pastor Burr and I are going to pray over you. And we're going to just kind of just worship to this song. If you're saying, God, I have what I have is, this is all I got. And that's perfect. What you have is enough. And I just want to open this time just to pray over y'all. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this time of just altar call, Lord. I pray, Lord, for all, all everybody here in this sanctuary right now, Father God. That whatever they're bringing, Father God, to church, whatever they're holding on to spiritually, mentally, physically, Lord, that it is enough, Lord. Just like the little boy that brought five loaves of bread and two fish, it was enough to feed 15,000 plus people because you made it enough. So, Lord, I pray that every single person, Lord, will bring what they have and that it will be enough because you can use that to prosper them, Father God. I thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We, we know that you are more we than enough, We just declare Father. that right now, Father God. A coming back right now, Father. A coming back right now, Father God. A coming back, Lord God. We just declare that right now, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that they're coming, bringing what they have, Lord God. And we know that you will just multiply it. We know that you will honor it, Lord God. They bring their hearts pray over them. Just speak life into their, into their lives. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We call them blessed. We call them anointed, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the overflow in their lives. 
We thank you, Lord, for the overflow in all of our lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are a healer, that you are more than enough, Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, Father. Y'all you know, just thank God this morning. Just thank him. And I want to do another separate altar call. If you have not received Jesus into your heart this morning, I want you to come up here, and we're going to pray over you. And if not, it's okay, because we're going to do a prayer all together. Amen? But if that's you, you have not received Jesus, raise your hand. If you have not received Jesus, raise your hand. I want to see those hands. Anybody here? Anybody here? We're all saved in the house this morning. Amen. God, we thank you, Lord, for this time of praise and worship, Father. We thank you, Lord, for this time, Lord. I pray that this word will stick into our hearts, Lord God, and that we will expect extraordinary this year, Father God, unexpected blessings, unexpected favor, Lord God. We receive it right now in the name of Jesus. We receive it. And everybody said amen. Amen. Can we give God a shout of praise in the house this morning? Amen. Hallelujah, 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 Father, we thank you, Lord. Amen, amen.